Over the course of these videos, we're going to put together the basics of a track using push. Let's start by step sequencing some drums. With a new project started and the MIDI track loaded, we need a sound source, so we hit the browse button on push to hunt for a drum kit. The left hand column of the browser display shows all of Live's virtual instruments. Load one by pressing the corresponding green button. The next column contains the instrument's preset categories, folders, while the two rightmost columns reveal the presets themselves in the selected folder. We're after a drum kit, so we select drum rack in the instrument column, core library in the category column, and kit core 909 from the presets. Pressing the rightmost green button below the display loads our drum rack, which is a sample TR909. In drums mode, the pads are divided up into three areas. The bottom left 4x4 block triggers the drum sounds in the rack corresponding to its 4x4 grid. If your kit has more than 16 sounds loaded, you can scroll through the entire rack using Push's touch strip, which otherwise serves as a pitch bend wheel. The top four rows of pads comprise the step sequencer, and the bottom right 4x4 block is where the loop length is set and the loop navigated. Our project tempo is currently set at 125 BPM, so we use the step tempo knob to increase it to 130. We don't really need the metronome since we're step sequencing, but if we did, we could activate it with the metronome button. We start playback, then enter a kick drum hit on the first beat of the loop, followed by kick drum hits on every other beat. The loop length is set using the bottom right 4x4 block of pads. Starting at the top left, each lit pad represents one bar. At the moment we have a two bar loop. The green pad shows which bar is currently playing, while all other active bars, or bar in this case, are lit up in blue. If we were to hit the top left pad, our loop would be set to one bar in length. Holding down on one pad and hitting another sets the loop to encompass those two bars and all bars in between. Holding the top left pad and hitting the top right one sets a four bar loop. We've only programmed two bars of course, which is why playback stops after bar two. Holding down the top left pad and hitting the bottom right one sets the maximum 16 bar loop. Let's get back to our two bar loop though. Notes are deleted by simply tapping them again. At the moment, all our kick drum hits are at the same velocity. Pressing the accent button sets the velocity for newly entered notes to maximum. Here we're upping every other kick drum to maximum velocity before returning them to the regular level. Now let's add a snare. Hitting the snare pad switches the step sequencer to the snare channel. Incidentally, holding down the select button while hitting a drum pad switches to that sound without actually triggering it. We put snare hits in on the backbeat. It's a bit quiet though, so we press the accent button and re-enter the hits to set them at maximum velocity. Next, we double up the snare with a hand clap. Holding down a pad gives you access to three note editing functions via the rightmost rotary encoders not including the master volume knob. The first is nudge which enables us to shift the selected hit left and right. The second is note length which doesn't have any effect on our one shot clap sound but would obviously shorten or extend a sustained synth sound for example. Finally the third encoder sets the velocity of the note. Live's undo function is served by Push's undo button. We hit it a few times to put our clap back where it started. Now for some hi-hats. First we tap in closed hats on the off beats. Then we end the phrase with an open hat on the last offbeat of the second bar. Individual drums can be soloed and muted. Holding down the solo button and hitting the kick drum pad solos the kick for example. Repeat to unsolo it. 
To mute the kick drum, hold down the mute button and hit the kick pad. Again, repeat the maneuver to bring it back into the mix.